I want to show you this real quick. Um, you know, I'm sure you've all heard of Akida Tahawi. And Salafis always act like, yeah, we follow Tahawi. That's our boy, dude. The funny thing is that um, yeah, they actually don't. So here he is beyond having any boundaries, right? This is an Akida Tahawi. Now, Ibn Taymiyyah rejects that. Pretty sure he says that God has a had. Actually, you know what? Let me find it for you to make it easier. Okay, let me read the rest of it. He's beyond having boundaries, limits, parts, or limbs. The six directions do not contain him. Right? And remember that Salafis get their Aqidah from Ibn Taymiyyah, not the Salaf. So let's actually see what Ibn Taymiyyah says. Right? So this is from Ar-Razi. And remember, he, he wrote a book, Bayan Tablis Jahmiyyah, responding to Ar-Razi. Right? So he says, rather it is clear that if if Allah was divisible, then this would mean nothing could exist. So he's kind of implying that God is, uh, I don't, I wouldn't say he means that God is divisible, but he was implying that God is composed of something, you know? Right? And then we can read it. He is saying that if something is not divisible in some sense, then it cannot exist, even Allah. He is affirming his belief that Allah is indeed divisible. Now, I don't think he means that he's divisible. I think he means that it's made of something, you know, maybe not matter, but we don't know. And here it is. We have already clarified what possibilities are associated with the word composition, settling in place, being other, having uh, a need, and that the meaning meant by this is something all existing things must be attributed with, whether necessary in existence, right? That's Allah because... Necessary existence is a terminology that Ibn Sina actually brought into Islam. I don't know why Ibn Taymiyyah is using it. Or possible in existence. Another concept from Ibn Sina's book, The Metaphysics of the Healing. Fairly, to say that it is impossible for Allah to be attributed with this is pure sophistry. Funnily enough, that's uh, calling it pure sophistry. Actually, I think Ibn Rushd is the one who said that. So I don't know where he's getting this from. <laughs> He's saying here that nothing can exist, not even a lot, unless it has a place, parts such as different physical ideas and needs. Based on this incredibly ugly statement, it is no wonder then that a number of scholars... Okay, let me get to the important part. Medimea says Allah has limits, right? He said this. This moderate saying among the three sayings of Al-Qadi Abayal is the one that he agrees with Ahmed and other imams. da 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 Allah is in a particular direction, and he is not spread out in all directions, right? There he is outside the world, distinct from his creation, separate from it, and he's not in every direction. This is what Ahmed may uh Ahmed said when he said one sec, sorry. He has a limit that only he knows, right? I don't even know where that is. I've never found that, but apparently, according to Ibn Taymiyyah, Ahmed said he has a limit that only he knows, right? And remember this Clearly here says that he is beyond having limits and boundaries and parts. If Ahmed had meant the direction towards the Arsh, only then this would be known to his servants because they know that Allah's limit from the direction is the Arsh. So we know that the limit they do not know is unqualified and is not specified for the direction of the Arsh, right? Note that this, he is saying first he claims that Allah is in a particular direction and that Allah's limit from this direction is the Arsh. This is according to him, the known limit. Then by his saying, he is not spread out in all directions. He affirms that Allah has limits in all other directions. That is up, left, right, back, and front. Right? And, and But these are unknown in terms of what they are. And here he's basically saying that Allah has a size. That something existing should not be increasing or decreasing, or neither increasing nor decreasing, and yet exist and not have a size. That is impossible. Right? So you have to understand that the way he talks is very cryptic, just like the way that if you read Ibn Sina and Ibn Rushd's stuff, it's sometimes what they're trying to say is kind of difficult to grasp. It's kind of like the, that's the tricky way that some philosophers speak. So, you know, we have the guy who wrote this article interpreting it for us. But as you can see, that's basically what he's saying. In other words, he is of the opinion that everything that exists, including the creator, must have a size, right? Allah's acts of creating come into existence in him. All right, let me, let's see. All right. I don't think that's from Ibn Taymiyyah, though. Maybe it is. Let's see. Rakaramiya, right? I, I made a video about them. All claim that Allah's creating is an event in Allah with a beginning, and that event occurs in Allah. 
the reason why they say that I think is because the argument that the universe can't be uh, something that comes into existence and be a temporal, meaning like it's limited by time while God is not limited by time. They say, oh, that can't happen. I don't really understand that argument, to be honest, but whatever. I really don't know how these, I don't think that's from Timothy. All right, here. It has become clear that nothing can come into existence except from an actor, right? That does something one after another. He also said an act is impossible except bit by bit, right? It's pretty interesting. In other words, according to Ibn acts of creation come into existence in Allah himself. I don't know if that's exactly what Ibn means, after non-existence. <laughs> it is necessary, a necessity of Allah's self to act, but not an act in particular, not having something done in particular. So there is no eternal object in the world. And he is not internally a complete influencer for anything to exist in the world, but he has, in beginningless eternity, always been a complete influencer for something. You see, he's saying it's necessary for God to act. I'm telling you, all this stuff is like, if you read Ibn Sina's books, it's not exactly the same thing, but a lot of it comes from there. I don't know how Salafis are like, oh, we're so pure. We're getting away from the philosophers. The Ashadis are influenced by. If anything, the, Sal the Ashadis use the philosophers in a way to, you know, be, you know, say things that are in line with Islam. He's just getting stuff straight from the philosophers themselves. Actually, this guy has a really good article on that. And for anyone who's doubting what I'm saying, this is a Salafi website, all right? It's quoting Ibn Taymiyyah and everything. You can look it up. So it even says here, right? Uh, one sec. Uh, yeah, here it is. Look, Ibn Taymiyyah and Bayan Tablis al Jahmiyyah, right? That was the book we were just using. He says, Allah is beyond the limits that we know, but has a limit that only he knows, right? And that's in the Salafi website. Is that, does that agree with this statement? No, this statement just says he doesn't have limits, right? And then it says, and let's find this. As for attributing the sixth direction to Allah, blah, blah, blah. Hold on. The scholars of Ahl Sunnah only affirm one direction to Allah, and that is direction of highness. Hmm, but at Tahawi says the six directions do not contain him. And... A highness or up is a direction, by the way. So don't tell me that, oh, we agree with that. And here is even uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, right? And the Salafi website are admitting. However, the up and down directions do not change. The circumference is always above and up. You know what I mean? So he is admitting that Allah is up. Yeah, and he's like up, up. You know what I mean? And this is Ibn Athaymin, one of the highest scholars in their school, right? Affirming the sound creed of the Salaf. Hold on, I thought they said at Dahawi was one of the Salaf, but he, he negates direction, right? But here he is saying uh, that Allah is above his creation. No, no, hold on. As for saying that Allah does not exist in the sixth physical direction, this statement is generally false. There it is, because it entails negating what Allah has affirmed, right? So I guess this guy is not one of the Salaf, then, because he didn't say that. Right, but there it is. You could read it yourself. And for anyone who wants sources on some of the stuff from the Ibn Taymiyyah article, and if anyone, this is a good article on uh, comparing Ibn Taymiyyah to the like Ibn Sina and all the philosophers. Pretty cool stuff. If you want to check it out.